We're here doing an interview with Eric Conover. And I saw that concept of showing something that not many people can see. Nowadays, I think people don't even want to even consider looking at a home if there's no video. That's the first thing, that's like the entry point. Everyone nowadays is a media company. It's the quality of the audience and not the amount. And I've got something, a little surprise prepared for you. Oh, so you filmed the whole tour and didn't we post did it? We did the whole tour. I looked at it and I said, this goes in the bin. What do you think about this guy? Like, would you travel from New York to meet this guy and do a property tour together? Another beautiful day. Well, actually a beautiful Sunday morning. Trying to be all cool. Walk here. into the house and um, we have a viewing soon. So instead of being home at bed, decided to come a little bit earlier. I can tell that Rafkat was like, you need to do this. And you were like, I don't want to do this. No, no, I was putting all my effort into it. But you see like the emotion. <laughs> well, just yeah, the energy is so different. Well, because I think the difference now is like, you know now that you could sell from them. Like you have the proof of concept. This was so, it was a question mark. You're like, is this going to work? And I can tell you had that kind of like, yeah, well, when, at least when I saw it, I, I, I understood like I need to put more energy into it. But that was like, that, I was not being bad. I was doing the best I could. Isn't that interesting though, how the camera does kind of lower your energy a bit? Yeah. Like slightly. And, and you never see yourself how the camera sees you. So it's always the first impact is really... Well, that's the beauty of the camera. You don't have to do anything. The camera catches everything. So you just have to be you. Yeah, you know? well, maybe a slightly better version of you at the beginning, especially. <laughs> because I mean, even like the clothes, like one of the things I really respect about your channel, like you're always so properly dressed. It's so funny because people, <laughs> people are such haters sometimes. Your, your suit's ill-fitting, your sleeves are too short. Like I have long arms, like... And then I start getting them custom tailored and people are just like, oh yeah, your suit doesn't fit. And it's like, this is like a custom suit supply tailored suit. Like this is not. <laughs> but I tell you, thank God I went with a suit as well. Because I mean, look at this guy. This, like, this isn't that, that bad that... though. Like as far as like <laughs> the actual videography and this has all been one take. No, 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 no. this cut? is jumping. You didn't see it. This is lots of takes. This every take was like four or five trials. This is only a year and a half ago? Yeah, July, Ju end of June, beginning July 2020. Even like how you uh, like present yourself now, like how you dress, like even when you picked me up from the airport, the first day I arrived, I was like, wow, this guy dresses sharp. Like, well, I, I eventually, that's one of the things, well, I always tried to, but I thought like this style would to be, be more casual, cool yeah. camera, like I'm trying to be all cool, like all that stuff, but it comes across like completely different. Even the cinematography and the actual video production has increased like with Rafkat because there's, I haven't seen any um, B-roll or beauty shots. Well, the thing is we didn't get to that point. Like when I saw this, I was like, no. Is there no music either? No, but this is like the rough edit. Oh, the rough cut. The rough the cut. Rough cut. <laughs> ah. The rough cut is also the videographer behind the... Yeah. <laughs> Does your audience know rough cut? Um, well, he doesn't appear much on camera. I feel like he should be on camera. He's a stud. He should be then, yeah. But he does all the videos, all the editing, he's amazing. I have to say though, it's, I went back and actually watched a few of my first ones. Yours is not that bad. Like my first few property tours that I did, like the first two I did with um, Sirhan, so it was easier with two people, you know, cause it's natural, you're having a conversation. But my first one I did alone, I went back and watched, I was like, this is horrible. I didn't even have it on a gimbal. We used to put them on tripods. Like literally a tripod and I talk to it and then get the B-roll. Oh. <laughs> like you at least had the, the good videography. Yeah. It's not horrible. Like the potential is there. I can see now it's uncomparable. Like this compared to how you are now in the videos, it's like night and day. Well, I think that's good as well what you said because like when I see it, I see it in horrible note, the next level. But I only like put this because I thought it might motivate someone. But it's a good point that you said that then thing is, you seeing yourself is completely different. Like even you watching it, it's not that bad, you say. I think you know? also we're very similar in the fact that, are you overly critical of yourself? Oof. I am my biggest critic. Like not as much anymore, but when I first started, I was so critical of myself. I think it's freeing once you like, even the video we did the other day where it was just like two takes for the whole tour, like yeah. it feels good. Yeah, true. Well, that's the thing, like over the time. You look so much, um, I don't even know the word for it. It's just, 
before you wouldn't see me out of bed till 12 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> but it's real. See, there's moments of like realness in there where it's endearing. I'm, I'm trying my best. Like 24 hours on the phone, showing properties, showing clients around. And, uh, but it's great. It's awesome. Uh, you really it's not horrible though. Like I think in your mind it might be a little, so you saw this and you're like, no, we're not doing it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no way. What did he say? He was just like, do you remember? <laughs> I don't remember exactly what I said, but I was like so, so felt so bad after that. I know how they made me try to do a second trial. And yeah, so know, what happened? So is, you did this and you said no, and then why did you continue? Well, I really believed in it. Yeah. And I tried my best to find a different option, someone else to do it, hire a, di a higher in a person. But then the problem with hiring someone, they can then leave. And it was all about also branding of the company. And I think that what did for me in the end, like when I did this take, I knew I could not use it. So the owners of the house, they were fine about filming. There was no pressure and I could be there as much time as I could. And then I was convinced to do a second trial. But the problem is we organized, Sergey organized this house for me to do the second trial, which was a um, 14 million property. Sergey had to sell the idea to the owners to allow me to tour it. So when I actually walked in that house, I realized that, oh, we have to post this. Yeah, there, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so there's the pressure there. There's no option. That's there, what you said right there in life uh, from just personal experience. When you put yourself in a position where there's no option, that's when you will succeed. I think that's what did the thing. Because you have to. Like, so uh, backtracking with this whole YouTube, um, I was doing YouTube for about a year and working a day job. I was working at like a hotel, like horrible job, horrible pay. And then there came a point where I'm like, if I don't quit this, this day job, I'm never going to be a full-time YouTuber. And I wasn't making enough to quit, but I just did it. And sure enough, in like two months, you know, I had a, like two videos go viral and I, it was my job. I became a YouTuber, but I wouldn't have done it if I didn't put myself in the position, like you said, where you had to post the second one. Yeah. Cause the, the client, knew about it. The new owner knew if I would have come back to him after spending the whole day in his 14 million house that was cleaned and prepared for me, if I would have oh gone back to him and say, listen, didn't work, like reputation and it would be like, so I was there, I remember there was one moment when we would have shot just like three minutes on camera, which actually was like six hours. And we come into this master bedroom and I was, Rafkat was there, me, Bruno was there, everyone was helping. So we're like, four people in the master bedroom, which is a, a master suite, like 150 square meters, has all the wow effects, it's a 40 million house. Rafka's lying on the floor because his back hurts from the huge <laughs> pressure. I'm lying on the bed because I'm exhausted and we're just there. How do you describe this bedroom? Yes, yes. I, I, that was the biggest hurdle, especially because I was not coming from being a real estate agent. I knew design a little and a little of architecture, but it got to the point where I'm like, how do I describe this? And especially, it, it may be a bit different for you because you are selling the homes and you're showing them, so you get familiar with the materials and the finishes and all that. But for me, in the beginning, it was like, how am I gonna describe this? And you have to get creative, and with practice you get creative. creative and. But also I tell you, there's many people might think that when you're a real estate agent, you walk in a property and you know all these funky materials, details, name of the marble, porcelanic and so on. It's not actually that true. You memorize it, you have to research it. You memorize if you want to. I mean, if you want to go that extra mile, that it moment there, I'm, I think I'm going to be like, try and be like funny, you know, like the closing. I think, I don't know if it's there on camera. Let me Second, see. qualities are very good. Third point. I've got the this camera saying that, you know, trying to be all. Car drives in, you've got a garage for four cars. But it's I think so, I just, I still can't believe the difference of that was only a year and a half ago. I did realize that after that take, I should not do anything seating. Like movement well, helps. Because well, even yesterday I, I said that, you know, we, we should sit down. Because when you sit down, people know, the audience knows, okay, he's sitting down, the video's and, and done. And the, the energy goes down. Where, however. Movement creates the, the story to keep going. Wow, I, I, it's not that bad. So it's like, bad. compared to now, obviously, it's not what it is now, but I can see the potential. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't. But thank God somebody did and somebody, or oh, it happened that way. 
So yeah, real estate agents, they don't know that much of the materials as well. So you have to practice. And that was one thing that YouTube eventually did for me. It made me also a better professional. Yes. And it made me want to, after seeing that, work more on myself, on everything. Uh, vocabulary, the looks, <laughs> excuse me very much, um, the knowledge, because yeah, and it's a, it's, it's a really big thing. So I'm just saying that it, it was a mind blowing change for me, something so simple and so accessible and putting it out there and he hearing all the critics as well and being able to go through that as well. I think it's a great experience. I think as an agent as well, because there is no barrier to entry. Anyone can be a real estate agent, right? So there's a lot of unprofessionalism. So you really have to be a self starter to, like you said, increase the vocabulary, educate yourself on design and architecture and finishes. You know, you are the face of your business. So dressing nicely, it may not have to be like a three piece suit, but you know, dressing smart. Yeah, absolutely. That was one thing I immediately understood. And the next house we shot, it was in August and I was dressed with a suit, black suit, I think, or dark suit. Uh, because it, it's, it's all about that as well. I, I don't even want to show you my first videos. They're actually not on my channel. I, I mentioned that last night. I filmed like 400 to 500 vlogs that I took down. Um, wow. I actually have them though. A viewer sent the, the files to me because I had lost the hard drive that they were saved on. And ironically enough, my first video ever was a, an apartment tour. The first one ever. Like that, it was a tour of Amazing. a place I was living in. Yeah. Wow. So it's kind of full first, circle. Really? Yeah, the first one ever. So it's pretty cool. But wow. <laughs> this right here, if you are watching this, this is proof <laughs> that in a short amount of time, relatively, you can you can do this. And I think it's cool that we should talk about um, different markets and starting because say you're in uh, like Kansas City in America, which isn't like a, a sexy or desirable real estate market necessarily. If you're an expert in a specific market, I think that alone is the value. Like you don't have to be shown crazy Marbella mansions or like $100 million New York penthouses. As long as you know your market, it'll work for you. Yeah, I think of course, when you start something new, if you can start with, <laughs> if you're a, uh, I don't know, you're start in your sector in what you know in what you thank god that finished that was tough for me okay i hope at least i can one... see also i guess when that started playing you were just you like it tensed up a little bit <laughs> i'm trying to pull out the comments just looking at this guy i can't believe it i hope that motivates at least one person to carry on trying it okay that's that yeah if thank you god. want it bad enough you'll keep going through the awkwardness yeah that's what it comes down to like if you want to do it and you see the value you will continue on through the uncomfortable because it's uncomfortable Absolutely. But Not I was really people. happy to hear from you yeah. what you said. Like it, for me, even now, I think is absolutely true. And I just realized, I realized it over these days, but I think this day to day is like the moment when I have finally got to the place where I said to myself, okay, I can do this. I'm comfortable with doing this. I, I, I start to enjoy it. And I'm like, because before it was a constant. A dread almost. Uh, yes. Yes. And then when you enjoy it, it's like a, a switch. It becomes like you look forward to it. You want to make the next one. You want to try new things. It's, I relate to that very much because when I first started, like I had, you know, two videos go viral that were home tours. And I'm like, crap, I have to, you know, the, people are expecting another viral video. So there's a, almost pressure to have the next one not even hit just as hard. <laughs> so it's like you have two that do well. Can the third one do well? And I think when you let go of that and the you, whole world looking at you, I, I don't, that's the interesting thing when you're filming, do you, maybe I'm not aware. I don't realize like that potentially a million people could watch it. Maybe it's a good thing. Which I mean, you get like, what's your top views? Uh, 10 million views. And ironically enough, it's not even a home tour. It's like a, a fitness challenge. But like when I made that, I didn't even think that, okay, maybe 10 million people will see me like working out. That didn't cross my mind. In my case, I have uh, my, uh, I'm focused on what I want to get out of it. So I have a really clear vision why I'm doing it, what yes, for, the and the views I really appreciate. I mean, all these comments, people who watch us, who encourage us to do it, it's amazing, but it's not like if the, the, the video gets a million views or two million views, 
Whatever you will get, I'm so happy about it. And it's part of the process to reach those targets as well. And I think that, I think that's important in a way. Like if you're really worried about the opinions, about how many views I get, it's yeah. just putting more pressure on you. You have to really detach yourself from the views. And then when you actually think about it, like say you have a video that gets um, 10,000 views, that's 10,000 people. Like what's, many of us have never even seen 10,000 people in real life like in the physical world. So that just shows the actual reach when you put it into the perspective of in real life, what would say 10 million people look like? It's absurd. Absolutely. So you can't really think about the views. You Like you said, you have to do it because you have your goals, especially when I make a video, I, I have a goal of usually telling a story like with the, the non-property tours or like sharing a beautiful country and the things to do. And with the home tours, it's showing off a cool home because a lot of times I think, would I want to watch this? Yeah. That's the question I always think anyone should ask themselves who they want to start on YouTube. Would you watch what you're making? And I've had moments where I wouldn't watch my stuff. That's what I'm going to take out of this conversation. Like, uh, because we're, we're so small compared to your channel. You've been in this so many more years, but I, and hearing from you that you actually wanted to quit at some stage, even being so successful at it, it just demonstrates that it is difficult. It's way more difficult, tougher than you think. And even though if you want to try this, and this is going to be demotivation maybe, but it's not going to get easier in two or three months. It's a question of really, really hard work. That's why so many people try and they don't manage eventually too. Yeah, it's just not stopping. Like I said in the beginning, like I don't think I'm good at one thing. It's I just, I didn't stop. I was consistent. I remember very clearly at 2K subscribers, I wanted to quit. Like I didn't post for three, I'm like, I'm quitting. And then again, right around like uh, 300,000, I almost quit. And then most recently at like 1.5 million, I, I was very close to like, I'm done this. Wow. And I kept going because it's something I enjoy. And it's something I'm passionate about. I like making videos. I like the community aspect of it. So yeah, I mean, I don't think I'll ever stop. Ah, I it's think a creative process. It's in that sense, it's amazing. And tell me please, what's the most expensive property you taught? Most expensive property? Actually, the, the one I just did mm -hmm. in New York, the, um, it's- At the apartment. Yes, the uh, Japanese inspired by Hiroshi Sugimoto um, penthouse in 432 Park Avenue, 135 million. I've also done uh, the Alwood Estate in Los Angeles, Holmby Hills was 115 million. Wow. Those are the two highest. Wow. Yeah, and that you can't even comprehend that. Like one, over a hundred million dollars there's maybe what, I think 3,000 billionaires in the world. Mm -hmm. Like the pool of buyers for that is so tiny. Yeah, but hopefully if, if it was like, if you got a million views on that video, maybe not the billionaire, but maybe the, his the neighbor kid, or, or the, the business neighbor part. Yes, exactly. or the maid, like she's cleaning, she hears him say, I want to buy this place. And you oh, have you seen there? And then it works. So for the right? seller as well, it's yes, it's, it's nice when like um, the seller, you can say, hey, the video we filmed has 2 million views. It makes them feel good. Even if a sale doesn't come, it's, you have something to show. It's branding as exactly. well. Exactly, it's, it's the branding. It's the branding, it's getting the home out there. Uh, even the agents, I like to do agent interviews. Like at the end of our tours, we kind of just sat and, and chatted a little bit. I think it's important when you do collaborate for like on my end, because I'm not an agent, to give exposure to the agents who are listing the home. Yeah, absolutely. No, and then you end up doing their job easier as well because, I mean, to explain a prop, when you do a client viewing, it doesn't go exactly as planned. You can't really talk like you want it's to It's very say. different than the video too. Therefore, when you do it for them, you also make their job way easier. Yeah, it, that's the thing also, I, you've probably noticed this, but when you make a YouTube home tour, it is so different than showing a home in your life. <laughs> like when you show a home, you would never say, oh, this is Carrera Marble and this is inlaid Ellie. The guy you just would passed, walks, walked past you and he's in the terrace and you're still trying to pronounce the marble. Because well, yeah, the details are great in the video, but at the end of the day, it's how the home feels, how it makes the buyer feel. It's not like, oh, this costs this amount or it, it, <laughs> no one has asked that. Even when I was selling in New York and I was showing homes, um, no one would ask like, what, what is this finish here? Or, like, does this have shadowless trim or people don't care? Exactly. Exactly. That's an interesting fact, but it's absolutely true. But then every client is also different. So you kind of have to adapt to their likings, their way of talking and what they, what their eye is catching. Yeah. What they're it's looking reading at, the room. There you, exactly. exactly. You read the client, you read how they are. If they want to go off on their own, you let them go. If they want you to walk them through it, it's just, I think being aware and just yeah, listening. Sometimes just I even listen, stand yeah. outside the door. Yeah. Just tell them to watch the video. <laughs> wow. But tell me please, and what would be like the most expensive 
property that's sold off a YouTube channel, off a YouTube video of yours? See, that's where it gets tough because I actually have like a, a pitch deck where I have all the homes that have sold. Mm -hmm. And okay. it's very hard to trace. Yes. So I filmed like the, the Alwood estate mm -hmm. that sold. I don't know if that's from my video. I know Architectural Digest did a video as well. So it's very hard to trace, mm -hmm. but uh, that's $115 million that one sold. I had a $46 million one sell, $35 million pen. I mean, there's quite Are a bit. Are these sales that happen kind of quickly after your yeah, video? Yeah, it's, it's usually heavily tied to the posting date of the video. Okay. Yes, there's been only very few agents. There's actually only one in particular, an agent out in Vail, Colorado, who's uh, he's been doing it for quite some time, 40 years. When I showed up, he had a written uh, letter, a formal letter saying he would agree to X percent for a finder's fee, signed it. Um, and I think because, you know, he's climbed the mountain, he's in his 70s, he has no need to be grabbing and scraping for commissions. And that was really refreshing to see. He, he, taking it into so any, he actually made, took the time to ask the client where he knew the property from and get, get the feedback to you. And that to make it transparent to me. That, bought it because of your video. Yes, so to make it make it say, okay, someone um, comes and says, hey, I saw this from YouTube. Mm -hmm. Oh, where'd you say, oh, Eric Conover's YouTube, then he would come back to me and I trust him. There's the level of trust. So that, that's refreshing. A lot of times it's not, most times it's not like that. Well, like I get it too, I get uh, it. Sometimes it's even, truly can be impossible to track it. it tru it's truly impossible. But sometimes you can do a bit better effort at tracking it. Well, because well, think, think about, it. say the agent comes and they have the, the person who's looking and they say, oh, I, I, I found it from the internet. It's in the best agent uh, interest of the agent to not say, oh, did you see it from Eric's video? Because then they have to give, you know, 20, 30% of the commission. Sure, so sure. they're just happy to get the person. And at the end of the day, like, I'm fortunate I've done very well from social media like beyond my the craziest dreams, like I was making like $15 an hour working at a pool at this hotel. My first year in New York. A pool? I literally as a, as a, a lifeguard at the pool really? with a college degree. I was working as a lifeguard. I know, making, you said that. Yeah, I was making like six euros, 25 cents an hour. Like I had a college degree from Northeastern University and because I wanted the free time to do YouTube and to learn how to edit, I purposely got a job where I didn't have to think. So like the, in the beginning, it was very, very tough. Like I don't come from a wealthy family. So like to have success from YouTube, it's amazing. But I think there's a certain level of success where it's just kind of greed at that point. It's like, why, why would you need to like cut and scrape and grab for things? So if a, a sale comes from a home I tour and the agent doesn't tell me, I don't care. I make a cool video. It helps build my brand. Uh, AdSense from the video pays pretty well. So. Okay, and if you don't mind me asking, it's okay if you don't want to respond, but um, like in your case, or not necessarily in your case, like out of curiosity, somebody who's doing um, as good or more or less as good on YouTube, how much money can you earn from that? It depends on your audience, it really does. Uh, like on quantity, quality, everything that's taken in consideration? The quality, it depends, especially uh, a large chunk of my business is working with brands mm -hmm. and I have a heavily based US audience, mm -hmm. which is a heavy consumer audience. And then even more so, they're all based in New York, Los Angeles, Florida, or Texas. Mm -hmm. All pretty high income states. So I can charge a premium for these brand deals. Say if another channel has 1.7 million and their audience is, let's say, in the Philippines, people in the Philippines don't have the same kind of earning power as people in the States. Of course. Um, so it's hard to say, but I mean, you can make seven figures from social media. Wow. Uh, obviously not easily, but like it's possible. And even I haven't even gone down these other avenues. Like I don't sell merch or I don't sell courses yet. I might be doing a course soon, but if I do a course, I would want it to be like almost a mentorship program. Mm -hmm. Whereas it would be a very select amount of people who would purchase the course and there'd be in-person workshops with me and branding strategy because at the end of the day, the thing I'm good at is branding, building a brand on social media. So, uh, I mean, yeah, you can, well, I mean, you've gone through the whole process. Yeah. You can do so pretty well on social well. media and it's amazing because it's something that I love to do. Like I remember very clearly in, in university, I had a professor in a media class tell me, cause I wanted to start a channel even back then. This is like 2011. 11. Yeah. When did YouTube was done? 2005 it came out. 
So by yeah. 11 people were the first wave of like YouTubers were making a living. And this professor's like, no, you know, you can't do that as a job. It's just like, it's like popcorn content. It's like snackable content. I can't believe we started doing the property tours only last year. That's why, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, the, the main reason I wanted to meet you was because I was so impressed that I saw that you just started doing it recently. Like I saw your uploads, I saw it was so recent, I saw the quality of the videos, and then the fact that you were so thorough and professional about your follow-up, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna fly out there and they're not gonna screw me over. I'm not gonna get there and they're gonna say, what homes? We don't have any homes for yeah. the tour. <laughs> oh, welcome. <laughs> it's kind of like a blind leap of faith, you know, coming out across well, the actually, country. I'd like to use this opportunity. We'll get back now to 2011 yeah. immediately, but I wanna say that we also, as a just show of will and gratitude, because I start the video saying, I'm a huge fan of yours. So when you f decided to flew, fly over, we organized the stay for you as well which is in one of the exclusive listings that we have. It's called Altius Marbella. So I just want to thank them for that and use the opportunity to make a little link to the channel. This is a five homes that are being sold in the Sierra Blanca area. And you're- I can say firsthand, the homes are incredible. I'm not just saying that because I'm staying here. The design, I love the layout, the sunroof, the pools, yeah, the I mean, views, check out like, the whatever you can see from there. They're very, very nice homes. They're very well done. Yeah, and only between two and a half and three million euros per unit, which is not I bad at all. I say only. Only. <laughs> it's still pretty good. But in the luxury market, it's on the, the more entry side. Well, you know, it's, it's we're, still, we're still on YouTube. Remember what I said? Because once I did this video that went viral uh, on Instagram, I got 20 million views. And, and I put villa for sale in Marbella only for six million euros. I think that only. Wait, that was only six million, yeah. that house, the one that went viral? Yeah. And I think the fact that I said only made people like there was the comment oh, like only how like, how dare you like <laughs> I actually have a video doing very well right now. It's the the narrowest apartment in New York City. It was Dutch built in the 1800s in someone's driveway, and I said selling for only five million dollars, and people are like only five million dollars. What? Which is a good thing because then you get people to comment, and then that's what I say when I was talking back before. You play devil's when advocate. You, when, depending for what social media, where you post the information, you can need to also sort certainly adapt it a little bit yes. to that ways of how it works. But going back to 2011, you said you were thinking. Yeah, of, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Uh, really since 2010, 11, that's when at first like, oh, maybe I should start a YouTube channel, like even in university. But I just didn't have the um, the balls to do it, really. I didn't have the courage to and the confidence to put myself on camera. Because even when I first started, all my friends from school were like, why are you filming yourself? Who do you think you are thinking that you well, could... especially 2011. Like... Yeah, well, no. I, so I started, my first upload was 2014. But even then, see, um, I was two years out of, three years out of school. You know, a lot of my friends were kind of well into their careers and here I'm like working at a hotel and like filming myself vlogging. They're like, what are you doing? But now those same friends are like, hey, can I come to Marbella with you and, you know, fly out business class? And it's like, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's an interesting world. No, and you said just the fact you posted, I think, one story, story you're in Marbella, you got like 50 emails or something like that. But that's like the that. beauty People. of it also. You meet the community. Uh, I used to do meetups when I would travel, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. and I made a lot of good friends from the YouTube. I mean, even us, like we met through social media. Uh, and it's actually, cool. that's another thing I wanted to ask you because I concentrate this conversation on YouTube because that's like for us the main mm -hmm. point of interest. But it's not only YouTube. You've got Instagram. You have TikTok. This happened because of TikTok because of a video that <sighs> I, I wasn't intending to do, which I did, which had no result on our Instagram channel. Then some TikTok account got this video posted somewhere I didn't even know about. You saw it, reached out to the account. They and said, this is not us, yeah? I had to, I had to like find you because I had seen your videos a long time ago and I didn't remember, because I didn't know your name. I knew the name of the company, Dramelia, yeah. Yeah. but I didn't know your name. So it was hard to find you. I was literally searching like blonde real estate agent in Marbella <laughs> and I found you. And then I found your email and that's, or maybe Instagram I found first. It was Instagram, but yeah. um yeah, I, I, it's interesting. I didn't start TikTok until like a month and a half ago. I was very, um, kind of not against it. It was just like one mm -hmm. more platform. And we had had this discussion off camera where I wouldn't really do social media if it wasn't like, I would do it for fun. Like I would make videos, but now it's a business. Um, you know, I wouldn't do it as much. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting with TikTok. It's, um, I find it fun now because we make these quick little like, yeah. you know, one take videos and it's fun. There's less pressure than YouTube. 
Well, you, yeah, YouTube has now implemented the shorts, which you, or the short yeah. videos, which you back then, back before you said that uh, they're like kind of maybe the future. Yeah, they're you pushing very hard. A big recommendation there, which we noted. But do you think like, um, like you have to be also like for us, we're not on TikTok or we're almost starting. Is it that important or is it just a place to be there because you have to be? Or do you think that also like YouTube, I can see the effect on real estate and we're selling through YouTube. Instagram, I can see and feel we're selling from Instagram as well. TikTok for me is, uh, is still something like very strange. I think on TikTok, you have to show your personality Whereas you can show these beautiful homes and they'll get a lot of impressions and views. But like once you show like a silly dance or you show like a morning routine day in your life and people get to know what you stand for, what you're about, then there's the value there. Mm -hmm. But then again, that's kind of like you have to put yourself out there, which can be scary. You might not necessarily yeah. want to put your personal life out there. Well, I mean, to a certain extent, YouTube also started like that. The audience, when it, I mean, 2014, 11, it was more much just younger oh, I was, people. I was That's vlogging it. back then. I was just yeah. filming my life. It was totally personal. Yeah. Too, too personal. And now we get clients of all ages, mm -hmm. like reaching out. And the nice thing about our channel as well, that I feel we don't only, of course, we pursue our own targets but it's really nice to like do this video as well it's for other people and i feel that we're kind of not only pushing out we're pushing marbella out there and we're creating a better image for marbella in yes. the world community or whoever is watching out there i think that that's a great thing to realize it wasn't our intention at all but I, i'm intending to try and make out of that a, a target and and pursue that in a more serious manner because once you start doing well at something, which I think we are slowly but surely now, at least in Marbella, I think we are the only real estate company that's doing this kind of stuff. And that also puts certain responsibility a yes, little bit. It, like it you, does. Sh you shouldn't just do it, carry on for yourself. Like, and it's a responsibility in terms of doing better content, better quality. And like, I'd like to feel that we can also push Marbella a bit. It goes hand in hand because think about it, a big factor, the, I think one of the biggest factors in buying a home is the location and what's around. So I didn't know where Marbella was. I had no idea, I had to, I had to search. Your first time in Spain. First time right? ever in Spain. So I think that's very smart. If like you the other day start, we were touring this house, you're like, where is the sea? Where is the north? I had, the I had to get my bearings, <laughs> I had to figure everything out. But I think that it's, it, they go hand in hand, the homes and the area. And I think you are doing a great job putting it on the map. And you do have a bit of a responsibility to showcase the best of the area. Yeah, absolutely. No, this is amazing, Eric. Like I appreciate so much Same your here. time your everything you've said it, it's amazing to meet you like for us it's a huge step forward to reassure what we're doing you guys are I, I say i'm not just like saying this like blow smoke up it, you i believe in let's say a year's time you could be at a million subscribers well. consistency content putting a bit more of your personality out there <laughs> i i really believe you can do it Thank you, thank you. Uh, hopefully, uh, first of all, I'll be a happier person than I am today, and uh, but because I'll have the million subscribers, of course. But it's interesting. <laughs> See, you say that, but like, that was my goal for a long time. Like when it first started growing, like I need to hit a million. I need to. My, and I'm like, oh, my life will be like this when I hit it. And then I hit a million subscribers, and I'm like, I'm the same. It's exactly the same. The feeling of accomplishment is great, but I, I think sometimes the journey. And the doing the growth is the, the most satisfying part of anything. The destination's great, but I think it's all just like the, the build up to getting there is what like I agree with you. Back I, on. I, and I think one of the beauties of this is that we're doing something still which is new. You don't have boundaries in what you do, so the destination can be even beautiful, more beautiful than you would expect or think of. And in the process you learn it. Yes. And and these things open up and these possibilities open up. When you remove the expectations in life, that's when the beauty happens. When you have, you have your goal, but how you get there is like the zigzag road and that's where it gets fun. Well, man, Eric. So I like mean. you have this end point, <laughs> but like, you know, a year ago, I wouldn't have thought I'd ever be in Marbella. And then, you know, I had a lot of crazy stuff happen last year in my life that wasn't the best, but I would not be here now if those things didn't happen. Absolutely. And maybe because of goal. this, I might go to New York someday you soon. You have to go to New York. That would be amazing. I will return the favor and the hospitality. Oh, thanks, man. Yes. Thank you. And I think we're coming to an end. I'd like to finish saying that we toured three properties in Marbella 
three, I tried to organize for Eric to see the best properties that are available on the market currently. So those will be coming out very, very soon. Stay tuned. Of course, all the links to Eric's channels, we don't even need to put them, but they are there. And truly, thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Amazing. Thank you very much. Keep thank it you. up.